Everybody have a good time at the formal? It's a pity about Cedric. I'm actually not here to talk to you about the formal or Harry Potter. I'm here to talk to you about summer. Yeah. You've been hearing from of students who received the pool and page grants and did cool things with the grants they got doing community service all around the world. Today, you are going to hear about the Kilbourne Summer Arts Enrichment Program. Now, this program was created by John Kilbourne, who graduated from Taft in 1958. And it provides funds for students to do intensive arts programs in the summer. You're going to hear today from four students who were the recipients of last year's program. And they did really cool things. And uh, they're going to talk about it. And then I am going to talk afterwards just very briefly about what you should do to, to start thinking about this program if you are a mid or an upper mid. So let's start with Maggie. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Maggie. I'm a senior. And this past summer, I used the Kilbourne grant to attend the US Performing Arts Camps Musical Theater Intensive at Georgetown University. So I'm going to take you through a normal day um, of my camp. But one thing I want to say before I start is that you're going to hear from a lot of students that are going into the arts as their majors in college or going straight to conservatories or arts programs. And I'm actually not doing that. I'm minoring in theater wherever I go. But I just wanted to say that so you guys know that um, the Kilbourne Grant isn't just for kids that want a career in art if you just love art, if you love writing, theater, whatever it is. Um, please like uh, apply for the art anyway because it's a really fun program. So my program was a week long at Georgetown and each morning we would start with acting class. Um, it was an, each of our classes were an hour and a half and my acting class was one of the weirdest things I've ever experienced in my life. Um, our teacher was weird, very interesting. He made us do some weird stuff when we were working with our monologues. For example, uh, we had one girl who her monologue should have been with a tone of frustration and so our teacher had her solve a Rubik's Cube while performing her monologue to try and get that out of her. Um, when I was working my monologue, he gave me a partner and I was supposed to be talking to him and he would just leave in the middle of a sentence. And I had to keep changing what I was doing and make the monologue interesting so that he would stick around and keep listening to me. Um, so that was really helpful for me because I've never had monologue training before and I've already seen it pay off this year at Taft and I'm excited to see how that helps me next year um, with my auditions at at college. Um, the next thing I had on the schedule that morning was um, vocal lessons, which was, again, interesting because I've taken voice lessons for almost my whole life, but this was a different style. Um, and our voice teacher was very blunt. And some kids didn't like that. But he would really, if you went up there and you didn't sound good, he would tell you. Um, and he was very mean to an extent. But it was good. It was exciting because he, he really gave it to you straight, told you like it was. Um, and then after that, we would go to dance class, which was really hard for me because I'm not a dancer. So, And there were so many different skill levels in our program. So some kids would go up on the dance floor and be doing like double turns and lifts and jumps. And I was like, all right. You go, guys. Good job. Um, and we would start every dance class with practicing pirouettes, which to a dancer is like a walk in the park. You learn that when you're in like little ballet when you're five. Now, I never learned that. So they were the, they're like these turns. And it's really not that hard, but I have really bad balance, and it was not a good time. So we had to do that every single day. So I had to embarrass myself every single day trying to do spins next to these girls who were like jumping and choreographed cats and won an award for it in high school. Um, and so then we would, we would end every day with our ensemble rehearsal. And our ensemble piece was Freak Flag from Shrek the Musical. They made Shrek into a musical, if none of you knew that. Um, so <laughs> it's a very interesting show. Um, so we did the finale from that for our ensemble piece. And I ended up landing the lead solo in that, which was really, really exciting. And that was really interesting, because for our ending showcase, we didn't have costumes. We just wore all black. 
but we had to like be our characters in the showcase. So I was Humpty Dumpty, which meant I literally had to do the whole dance in the song like this. And I was like walking around stage like this, which was ridiculous. Like, what, what was I doing? But it was fun because it was stretching us to make, to not depend on costumes or makeup to be the character. So we had to stretch ourselves and um, make sure that we could get into character without all of those added extras. Uh, so that was my day. And we did a showcase uh, at the end of the week for our parents that came to pick us up. It was a really great program. Um, Georgetown is awesome, but the US Performing Arts camps have different types of programs, musical, theater, act college intensives at universities all across the country. Um, so I would urge all of you to apply for the Kilbourne grant and to go to a US Performing Arts camp. So if you have questions on the program, the grant, anything, stop me in the hallway, send me an email, anything. I'd love to talk to you. Thanks. Hey guys, I'm Kayla Kim, and this summer I went to Oxford, England to study Shakespeare and Oxford authors. So, slide, advancing. It's supposed to happen, I'm sorry. Technology. Please help, Mr. Kivit. Okay, so I love English more than anything else, and there is no better place to study English than in England, which I would be able to show you if I was not bad at technology. But anyway, yeah, I went to study English in England this summer, and I studied at Oxford. Oxford has 38 constituent colleges, so like baby colleges that make up the big college, and I stayed at one of them, which was right outside the city, just a walk away from the center of the town. And it was called Lady Margaret Hall, and it had the most amazing gardens, and it was right next to the university park. So every morning, I would wake up, and I would go for a run next to these lovely little geese and swans, and then after after breakfast, I would go to my first class, which was Shakespeare. It was two and a half hours of just sitting down with people who love Shakespeare just as much as I did. So to give you an idea of how much these people love Shakespeare, we went to see a garden performance of King Lear, and on the way back, we analyzed it for an hour. <laughs> like, how many of you would do that? Probably not that many. But <laughs> it was really amazing. We were able to, t we didn't just read Shakespeare. We didn't just sit there and write papers about Shakespeare. We went out and we saw a copy of the first folio Shakespeare, which is the first collection of all of Shakespeare's works ever created in the 1620s. And then finally, we were able to go to the Globe Theater and see King Richard II performed, which we had been reading. So it was really amazing to see this thing that we had been reading about actually performed live by real people. So after my first class, we had four hours to go out into the city and do whatever we wanted for lunch. We were able to go visit some of the other beautiful colleges like this one. We were able to go and have lunches in the cafes. I would sit down with my friends and write sonnets for the entire time. <laughs> so great. <laughs> and then after, thanks, after lunch, I would have my second class, which is Oxford authors. We would study these fantasy authors, J.R.R. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, Lewis Carroll, all of these amazing authors. My final paper in this class was called The Lion, the Witch, and the Misogyny, because you have no idea how sexist C.S. Lewis actually was. Come talk to me about it sometime. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but because these people lived in Oxford, we were able to visit all of the places that they had lived and worked. For example, this is the hall at Christ Church, where Lewis Carroll supposedly ate over 8,000 meals, and where he met Alice Little, the girl who inspired Alice in Wonderland, with whom he had a questionable relationship. And in addition to being the home of Lewis Carroll, this place was commissioned by Henry VIII, the king with like all those wives that he beheaded. It was the home of John Locke, the famous philosopher, and most importantly, this was the place where Harry Potter was filmed. Like, it was, it was really cool. There were so many filming locations for Harry Potter in Oxford. It was really insane. So we didn't just read old dusty books. We went and saw The Changing of the Guard at Buckingham Palace. We went to Bath and we saw the Roman baths. And we went to Blenheim Palace, the birthplace of Winston Churchill. So this summer was really the best of my life. So thank you so much to the Kilburn Grant for giving me this opportunity. Have a nice day. My name is Natasha Chung, and this summer I took advantage of the Kilbourne Grant to fund my program in visual arts. Um, Art as Experience is a um, three-week college course at Cornell University summer pre-college, um, and as 
Each week is supposed to represent one month at Cornell during a regular term. This course was pretty intensive. In a typical day, we had six hours of class. Um, and in the morning, we would usually have a lecture about an upcoming project and start working. In the afternoon, we would either continue with our projects or have three hour long critiques of everyone's work. Um, sometimes a visiting artist would give us a lecture or help us out on our projects. And of course we would have homework, but as, as strange as it seems, we did more reading and writing than drawing and painting, um, because art theory and critique are essential components to this course. Oh, whoops, no, nope. okay. Uh, here is my class on our first day, and we had a small class of 16 students with Professor Brack and our teaching assistant, Misha. And this is the collaborative gridding project, as you could see behind um, the previous slide. Uh, and this is uh, my component of the gridding project over here. And here's another collaborative project inspired by John Divitz, where we experimented with perspective. And like the white tape, oh, the white tape is what you're looking at. And this is another group's um, project, just to give a better idea of what this is. It's the blue tape over here. Uh, we also went on a field trip to Mass Mocha, which is a museum five hours away from Cornell. Even though we had to take an entire day of travel just for a couple hours at the museum, I thought it was worth it. Um, and Mass Mocha is now one of my favorite museums. It has no permanent collection, so all the exhibitions have a time limit, ranging from weeks to years. Um, here's uh, one of the works at Soli Witz exhibition, uh, which has a time limit of 25 years. Silkscreen printing was entirely new to me, and since I love playing around with color, I found that printing allowed me to experiment with layering. And here are some pictures of my setup in the printing studio, making many copies of one print. On the right is my classmate clearing the screen. And here's a squeegee with red, yellow, and blue ink blended together to make a rainbow roll, and here are the results of the rainbow roll. And at the end of the course, we had to create a final project in which we could choose any media we wanted to use. Since these past three weeks had encouraged me to get out of my artistic comfort zone, I decided to mix media that I was still unfamiliar with and to take advantage of the summer course as an experimental experience. On the right is my final project, uh, where I screen printed on wood and painted with gouache and acrylic. In addition to our individual final pieces, our final exam for the course was to advertise, set up, and host an exhibition for our class's work. And on the left is a section of our exhibition. Instead of separating our works by student, we had to learn how to group works together by aesthetic order. And here's a photo of our exhibition space, and at the back, we projected um, our, our short animations. We also arranged our class's drawings from the first week, and it was really interesting to see the difference between everybody's 30-second sketches and 30-minute drawings. On the left is my photos, um, my group's photos, photo exhibition, and on the right is the giant tape ball that we um, made out of the, the second collaborative project that we did, and also the photos of that are on the platform. And to wrap up my presentation, I wanted to talk about why I chose this program and what I got out of it. Although my program was not specifically catered to portfolio building, I wanted to explore new media that I would not have had access to at school or at home. Also, it was my first time working together with other artists to create one large cohesive piece. Because I used to think that art was more of a solitary activity, I didn't consider that I could collaborate. Um, before taking art as experience, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to an art school or do an arts program within a large university. And at Cornell, I got to meet all types of people outside of my arts course, from sociology to biology and hotel management, and also similar courses such as design and architecture. Uh, even, though I, even though many people think that students can't get to know professors well um, at a large university, I realized that I can make a large university small, but not the other way around. After my summer experience, I feel that I've confirmed what I want for my college experience. And I could keep on talking about my, um, what I got out of the Kilburn grant, but it would be great if anybody has any questions to approach me directly. Thank you.
Hi everyone, my name is Kerry Kanata, and over the summer I spent a month and a half on the campus of Northwestern University, uh, which is just south of Chicago, and there I studied filmmaking and screen acting with the National High School Institute. So when I started applying out to summer programs uh, around this time last year, I knew I wanted to do something with acting, which is something I'm really passionate about. And so when I found NHSI, which is a summer university immersion program with like dozens of different branches that cater to all different kinds of students, I started off by looking into the theater arts program, which has around 200 students, so it's a lot larger and uh, less comprehensive than the program I ended up going to. Uh, when I found out that the film division at Northwestern also had a much smaller acting concentration, I was really intrigued, and I ended up applying for that one instead. Looking back, that was definitely the right decision for me because my experience this summer really validated my, uh, my goal of pursuing a career as a screen actor after I graduate. So what was so cool about Northwestern's screen acting program was that I got to spend my mornings in core classes where I studied drama very intensely, and then I got to spend my afternoons in electives um, that kind of put me outside of my acting comfort zone. So for example, I took a class in avant-garde film, and in that class we uh, watched, discussed, and analyzed different experimental movies. And I also took a class all about the art of a long take, which is basically a really long, and carefully choreographed and shot take in a movie that some movies like Pulp Fiction or Birdman more recently made famous. Um, and then for our final project, we actually wrote, directed, produced, and acted in our very own long take, which uh, we'll show after I'm finished. Uh, so during my time at Northwestern, I, I got to work with really qualified teachers from all around the world. I had a teacher from, um, I had a teacher from France, I had a teacher from England, um, I had teachers from South America, so that was really cool. Um, and I also met more than 80 other kids, um, actors, producers, directors, writers, who came from all over the US, and um, everyone was unique, but we all shared the same goal of pursuing a career in the arts, and that was a really cool and uh, new and invaluable experience for me. So my summer at Northwestern was transformative in a lot of ways. First of all, I met a ton of friends that I still talk to today. I created things I never thought I'd be able to. I learned a lot about acting for the camera, and I also learned about all the ins and outs of the entertainment industry. And before last summer, I was really up in the air about pursuing a career in acting because a lot of people would say that like, it's not practical and there's no job security, but now it's really all I can see myself doing, and even if that means I have to be a waiter until I'm 60, so. Um, so if you have any other questions or you want to know more about the program, just shoot me an email or stop me in the hall and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. So thank you so much. Those are really incredible. I think we should put our hands together for those four students. Really great. 
I'd also like to, to thank Mr. Kilborn for, for establishing this program and for being so supportive of the arts at Taft. I think it's really important. And as you can see, these four students had, as Carrie said, a, a, a common goal of being really passionate about what they, what they love. And uh, it, it actually, coincidentally, these four did college programs, but uh, there are lots of programs out there to do. There are photography institutes and, and dance programs, and somebody one year did uh, uh, fashion design at FIT. So there's lots of things that you could do. Uh, so I, here's what I want you to do. I want you to start thinking about what you would like to do, where you'd like to go to camp, arts camp that is, and I will be sending out an email uh, and an application. And so if you start thinking about this over spring vacation and uh, look for my email, I will send the, app, the application and I'll be happy to talk to any of you about what's out there that I know of. And as I said, these four are great resources now for their programs. All right, thank you very much. Have a great day.